Hello, welcome to Analytics for All. Today we're going to cover linear regression using Excel. We're going to be doing a single variable regression, simplest one we can think of, and we'll be doing the ordinary least squares method. Don't worry if you don't understand this, I'll explain it simple enough, but I'm not going to go too deep into the math on you here, just trying to get the concepts across. Well, as always, I upload the uh, exercise files to my website at analyticsforall.org forward slash exercise file downloads. And if you go there, you can come up and see linear regression, single variable, linear regression. This green thing right here, you click on that, and that'll give you your Excel file. Now let's start real quick with what is linear regression. Well, linear regression is it's, it's a form of statistical modeling. It's a predictive model. You guys have heard of predictive analytics. Uh, this is kind of the start intro to that for you. Uh, what we do is we take some data here. And it could be like, two sets of data, say height versus weight, uh, years of experience versus salary, things that are they're, they're related. You know, as your as your height goes up, most likely your weight's going to go up. As your years of experience go up, most likely your salary goes up. And we plot this data using lots of sets, and we try to uh, find a prediction method for using what's called a uh, the line of best fit. We draw a line through our data set. And this gives you a formula, and once you have that formula, you can now make predictions on if what somebody who's been working there 20 years, well, they should probably be making 80,000 according to my predictions on my line here. Now, I'm not going to go too deep in the math here. I, I really, I really recommend Khan Academy videos if you want to learn about this stuff. I posted one uh, on my website under uh, my linear regression using Excel article. It's right here, Khan Academy linear regression. If you want to learn, he brings you nice deep into the weeds, and you can learn all about the math behind this. What I'm going to do here is let's just look at our, this is the file you can download here off of Excel. And what I've done is I've created a data set of years with a company versus the salary. And you can look down here, and you can see the years range anywhere from one year to, looks like 30 might be the top, and the salaries range. And I've got 39 piece of data is 40 but keep in mind the top line is our title so how do we go about doing a linear regression in Excel in Excel it's incredibly easy for those who remember having to do this by hand in stats course you're gonna love this okay so what you do is pick the first thing hold down your shift key and go down and highlight the entire data set okay now we're gonna go up top to the insert tab on our ribbon and you will see across here graphs and charts. We're going to drop this one. This is a scatter chart. This one with all the little dots. That's what we want to look at first. We're going to hit this guy right here. And I like the first one. I'm just going to click right there. Okay. And there you go. Now we have our scatter chart. Okay. So now we're looking at our scatter chart. And what we've done is we're plotting. Each dot represents a person. So each dot here is represents. This is the years working this is their salary. So based on our data we fed into it, it put us a dot for each one of those spots. Uh, so the first thing we really want to do is look at this. Get used to looking at graphs. I mean, this is probably the first thing. It'll save you a lot of time in the end. Because as you're seeing here, with this graph, we, we're seeing something here. There is seems to be a pattern. I seem to see a place where I could easily, you know, draw a line here that would kind of align to all these. If I were looking at this, and I had just a bunch of dots here, maybe some down here, or come over here, I would say this is not a candidate for regression. So that's why really the first thing to do is really to do these graphs so you can see and look at it and tell you if it's even worth your time going forward. Okay, now we have the line, and you notice that as X increases, so does Y. We call this positive correlation, okay, if you've heard the phrase. If it was to go the other way around, if as our X increased, our Y went down, that would be considered negative correlation. Just needs no fact. You don't have to worry about it to move forward. That's just, you know, the phrase you'll see if you go looking up any stats books. Okay, but so going forward, our goal for today, what we want to do is we want to find this line. And well, how we do it is using what's called the ordinary least squares method. And what that means is, if you were to do this manually, you could sit there, look at this, and say, okay, well, this looks like a decent enough. Let's try this one. And then you'll go through and you'll measure what's known as the residuals here. And these residuals are the distance between the 
actual finding and your guess, your best guess, your, you know, some of these residuals are almost on the line, some are quite a bit off the line. And you'll measure all these residuals up, you'll add them all up, and then you'll do another line, and you'll add all those up, and then you'll do another line, and then you find the line that has the least number of residuals, and that is your best bet. It's, as you can imagine, it's kind of tedious and a lot of calculations, but luckily with Excel, we have a much better way of handling it. Let's go ahead, let's grab this. Grab this chart, move it up here so we can work together. All right, so I've got my chart. And the one thing you want to do is you're going to hit up here on the chart, not down here, up in the boundary area. And then you'll go across to the very end. You'll notice something called Chart Tools. You're going to want to click on the Design tab. If you're clicked on the chart, it'll bring you to that Chart Tools. Okay, now on the Design tab, what, sorry about moving around here so much, but over to the left, you have this far left Add Chart Element. We're going to go down there. We're going to hit trend line, and we're going to pick linear, okay? And there you go. It has just calculated the line of best fit for us without us having to sit there and do all that math. Now, I'm not a big fan of the, the color here. So what I want to do is, first let's move this over here so we can work. Again, sorry, moving, moving. All right, if you click right here, on the line, you'll notice my format trend line now pops up as an option here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make some change just to make it, this is just a visual, purely a visual thing. I'm going to change the color to red, bring this value up to three, and I'm going to get rid of the dashes, make it solid. I like this line. This line looks a lot better to me. Okay, but now we got the line. We're looking, but what can we learn from the line? Well, not much just looking at the line. But what we can do, is you see these bars here, trend line options? We're going to go here, and we are going to show a few things. We're going to display the equation on the chart. Don't worry. Let me see if I can get this a little bigger for you so you can see it. Uh, oh, not that big. <laughs> All right, that's good. That was good. Okay, there. Sorry, a little technical difficulties. What we've got here is the line. This is the typical linear equation. All right. If you remember this from algebra, the linear equation was y is equal to m x b, where m is the slope. Let's make the m lowercase here, and b is your y intercept. So what does that mean? Okay, that means the y intercept is this point right here. Any point where you cross the zero threshold on y, that's the y intercept. Well, how do you get that? Well, at that point, if I'm hitting y intercept, this line, my x is at zero. So if my x is zero, that automatically knocks that out. So that means the only value left on this side of the equation is the b value, the y intercept. So what that is telling me is somebody with zero years, somebody first starting off with this company, averages. $50,974. Hey, not a bad starting salary. And it seems every year now will gain you because one in place of Y will give me another 1300 to add. Two will give me 1300 plus 1300 and so on and so forth. And so what we've done now is we've created our prediction equation. Now, what can we do with it? Well, let's watch. Okay, so let's just make a little formula here. We're going to call years of experience and we're going to make up salary, okay? So, years of experience, we'll even make this look pretty. Maybe not. Okay, this is going to be a factor. We'll put in one as a placeholder right now, okay? And we're going to put our formula in is equal to 1357.9 times L2 plus 50974. Okay. So, if I want to find out, if you tell me somebody's working there 15 years, how much do you think they make? Type in 15. Somebody's working there 13.25 years? There we go. Okay, now that's all well and good. That is how linear regression works. But there's something else we really need to look at before we can go and say, hey, we figured it out. This is great. We have an option. Double click on the trend line again, brings us back to our trend line options, and we're going to scroll down and we're going to put up one more thing. I call this the R squared value. 
I want to show that on the formula. Okay, now you see my R squared value here came up as 0 0.04423. Okay, so what is R squared? Well, R squared is a calculation of these residuals left over that don't line up on the map. Again, this is something you can calculate. You get out your stats book, go to Khan Academy, he'd be more than happy to show you. But this is the formula. If you if you really feel the desire to go through and hammer this one out, be my guest. Uh, I did it in stats class, and I don't have to do it again. But because all I have to do is click on that nice little button down here that tells me show the R squared. What you need to know is what does R squared mean? Well, R squared is a value between zero and one okay with one being perfect correlation every dot here would be on the line and zero meaning you have no correlation at all there's no point in doing this so the closer to one you get the better your line is at predicting and and I don't if you're a stats guy don't come and yell at me here but the easiest way I always remember is I look at this like a percentage so I'd say this one is 44 percent that means my equation here is, is only 44% accurate, not my favorite. I normally try to keep my R2 above 0.6. So what can we do to fix it? Well, one of two th options. One option you can do is try to get more data. We only have 39 data points here. I bet you if I had another 100 data points, it would probably clean up and get a tighter R2 value. And the other is you can look at outliers. I mean, you can look at these ones jumping way off here. So I got a guy here with one year experience and he's making $82,000 a year. Uh, could that be right? Well, you never know. It could be. I mean, he came over with an MBA from another company. Maybe he's only been one here one year. It's totally possible. One of the downfalls of a linear regression is that these lines are very susceptible to outliers. As you see, this is our guy here. This is the one he's making a bunch of money. If I brought him more in line with everything else, put him at $50,000 for one year, look, our R squared goes up almost 10 points up almost gets me to the 60 threshold I like. But the truth is, I, I can't make that change. It's uh, I don't know enough information. I don't have enough information to go on here. All I have is years and the salary. So the truth is, in this condition, you'd have to go back to your boss or whoever and say, ah, we need more data. We can't. I cannot give you a real prediction based on the information we have here. And I did want to show you. I wanted to show you what this stuff doesn't always work out because too many examples they give you in books, they're just all nice and clean and pretty, and the real world just isn't full of those. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please visit my site, analyticsforall.org. I've got lots of articles and videos on interest or anything analytics, uh, and I hope forward to seeing you again. Thanks. Bye.